Hi, Dr. Barry, London News, Melbourne. You've just got to see Alan Jones with his guest, Catherine McGregor, and a few more on. He's just, as we say, hit the nail on the head talking about our dictator, or what could be seen on reasonable grounds to be a sociopath, psychopath, Daniel Andrews. Now, this only applies to Victoria. No, it applies to Ireland. It applies to all over Australia because this is happening everywhere. They have completely left the socialists. The American Democrats own and control the whole flaming world. And anybody said to you a few years ago, they couldn't do this. Well, they've done it and they'll do it again. And the next stage is climate change where this is going to continue because now they have 80% of the mask wearing stupid sheep who will not protest against anything. They'll just say, yes, punish us more until we get sick. Well, I and others are sick and tired of the BS. So let's move away from these psychopath politicians we have and get on. Alan Jones and Sky News, is a, this message has to be seen by everybody and that's why I'm putting it together and sharing it because it's fact. Well, just back to this dictator, Andrews, Victorians are writing to me in their droves saying, who can we appeal to? You've heard me just say there should be a royal commission, there should be prosecutions, and someone has to nail the governor who has reserved powers. I repeat, to quote, ensure that Victoria's system of government operates within the accepted democratic and constitutional framework. Well, there is another fly in the ointment. Where is the Lord Mayor of Melbourne, Sally Cap, a Dan Andrews apologist who pretends to be independent, her deputy on her election ticket is Nicholas Rees, a prominent Labor Party figure. He appears on Sky News here with Paul. Actually, he always seems to me to be a reasonable bloke. But here's the rub. A vote for Sally Cap is effectively a vote for Daniel Andrews. So I'm saying to Melbourne people, take this seriously. Postal voting closes this Friday, October 23. There is an outstanding alternative independent Nick Russian. He's young, he's presentable, He's a small businessman who owns a bar in the city, which cost him a fortune to fit it out. It's now closed under lockdown, along with all the hospitality venues. He's heard medical experts say correctly that lockdowns don't work. He's heard the Oxford University Professor of Theoretical Epidemiology, Sunetra Gupta, urging Australia, and I quote, to abandon its selfish and self-congratulatory lockdowns. Well, this man, Nick Russian, is running for Lord Mayor of Melbourne, running on an independent, pro-business and pro-residence ticket. So Melburnians, come on, here's your chance. The first opportunity for people power. This bloke will stand up to Andrews and reopen the city. He's a common sense fellow and will end the lefty group think. Sally Cap is essentially a bureaucrat and an ex-lobbyist. She was the Victorian director of the Australian Property Council. She's part of the political swamp. Nick Russian joins us from Melbourne. Nick, thank you for your time. I hear you're Good a evening, of, Alan. I hear you're a bit of a Thanks. goer. And I understand Thanks you're right. for having me, mate. <laughs> Not at all. Your wife, Rosalia, was born in Russia. So we've got Nick and Rosalia Russian. Rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It rolls off the tongue very well. In fact, that was my uh, terrible pickup line when I first met her, mate. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that does roll <laughs> off the tongue. Now, you've been married uh, for seven years. You've got two kids, Kingston 3 and Willow 6. Have you been called upon by senior people to run? Look, I was, I was approached about five weeks ago, so it was a very, very last-minute approach. And, um, you know, the, the overall consensus was that there's just a massive detachment between leadership and small business and community at present. You know, me being from a, uh, a small business background with uh, many other hospitality operators feel that we're simply not being heard by our leaders at either state level or a council level. So, uh, yeah, they're all career politicians well, and we don't feel like we've, we're, no. uh, we're, we're getting a voice. Well, these so, people have uh, never had a business. I mean, you've got a stake, haven't you? You've invested millions in this new bar, Bambi. It's idle. It's locked down. You might have noticed a story today that there's a survey of 5 million people for the Centre for, of the Future of Democracy, Cambridge University study, and it found that millennials, you're nearly one of these millennials, people between 22 and 38, are saying this is the first generation in living memory to have a global majority who are dissatisfied with the way democracy works. You're going to address that. Absolutely. Look, I believe there needs to be a complete cultural change within the council. It's just so left. And as you mentioned earlier, this whole group think, it's, um, it's, just, sending us, uh, it's, it's just sending us down the wrong track. So if I get into, uh, into power, then I'll 
be uh, I'm taking more of a common sense approach, business approach, an innovation approach to uh, try and get us out of this mess. At and the none, moment... Uh, none, none of the other candidates have run a business in the CBD. None of them. None of them at all. So, and a Andrews you know, knows nothing about small business. I mean, nothing has, at all. Has Sally, so Cap, keep... has Sally Cap opened her mouth to represent Melburnians against what has been done to them? Absolutely not. And and as you mentioned before, you know her her uh, deputy in her on her re-election ticket is uh, Nicholas Reese. So, mm. you know, as as you mentioned, if you're voting for Sally, you're really voting Absolutely. for Labor, and um, it's it's just disastrous. So, okay. Well, um, well now, time for Nick, a Nick can't say this, but I will. Now, Melbourne, Melbourne. He needs you, you need him. There's a website, bringbackmelbourne.com.au, bringbackmelbourne.com.au. The voting is by post. You should have got something in your post on October 6. The team is Nick Russian. The voting's already opened. As I said, you should have got the ballot on or after October 6. And the last day for voting is this Friday, the day after tomorrow, the 23rd. And the last day for your postal vote to be received is the following Friday, the 30th of October. So come on, Melbourne people power. You've got to vote. Nick... Good to talk to you and good luck. Good on you, mate. Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. There he is, a young bloke with a bit of get up and go and he's got a stake in the whole thing. Bringbackmelbourne.com.au Well, I'm sure the very popular Catherine McGregor and I are on the same wavelength here. I'm writing tomorrow in the Daily Telegraph in Sydney and the Courier Mail in Brisbane and in the Gold Coast Bulletin. But the crisis we face in this country is a crisis of trust. Only today, as I just said to Nick, we learn of a survey of nearly 5 million people around the world where millennials, young people, 22 to 38, are more disillusioned with their system of government than any young generation in living memory. The study's lead author from the Centre for the Future of Democracy at Cambridge University was quoted as saying, this is the first generation in living memory to have a global majority who are dissatisfied with the way democracy works. Catherine, welcome. How much damage has been done by the arrogant authoritarianism of, of government members, premiers and prime ministers? Well, there's, there's two issues, Alan, and the latter one you raise is, is a very valid point. We've, this year has been an appalling year for the rule of law and our democratic and liberal institutions in Australia. We've seen the effective government uh, by executive diktat, especially in Victoria, but uh, you know, quite arguably unconstitutional behaviour by a number of states in closing borders and imposing uh, all kinds of restrictions on movement, all done through the executive. Uh, parliaments have barely sat, so there's been that erosion. But that survey you're referring to, that global survey, is very, very alarming. I'm not surprised, but I'm depressed by it. And I think it shows you that generation has grown up without the reality of the Cold War. We were forged by parents who had survived depression and Great War. We lived with some degree of fear of the nuclear bomb being used in our lifetime, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Cold War. Evil had a face and a name. Mm. And this generation is the product of the left march through the institutions, which has gone unopposed. Mm -hmm. The Berlin Wall collapsed, the Soviet system collapsed, the critique of capitalism was debunked, but we have lost the culture wars. Conservatives have forfeited control of our key institutions, mm -hmm. and you've now got moral relativism taught in our universities. So these people can flock to a guy called Sanders, who's running as a socialist, for God's sake. Right. You couldn't find a socialist outside a theme park in Albania until a decade ago. <laughs> Brilliant. In, a, in an outstanding editorial in yesterday's Australian, it said, and I quote, Victoria is home to a veritable human rights industry, unquote. Catherine, not a squeak of indignation. Who is protecting the freedoms that have been eroded and trampled on? That's a very good point, Alan. It shows how fragile, especially at a state level, where there is no real separation of powers. Uh, I don't want to bore your audience by getting too legalistic, but the doctrine established under a case called Cable, spelt with a K, uh, showed that there was a limited ability for the courts, uh, the state courts that are repositories of federal jurisdiction under the Constitution to have a limited separation of powers. But these state governments, if they are of a mind to pass plenary legislation 
for the peace, good order and well-being of their states. Yeah. Those have been held to be terms very expansive in their interpretation. They are not terms of limitation. So you get your Victoria, you, you get your Western you Australia, well, let me you ask get you Queensland. This. You're right. Let me ask you about these human rights people. You see, they're walking contradictions. They object yep. to hard borders yep. when they want to let every illegal into the country. But when the states trample over yep. Section 92, which guarantees intercourse with yep. the states and that must be free, you can't hear a squeak from them. The Privy Council held that that uh, absolute freedom of intercourse was one of the few genuine human rights in the Australian Constitution. That was in uh, the bank nationalisation case a long time ago. You, so your point is well made, Alan. And these human rights lobbyists sat mute when that appalling emergency omnibus bill yes. was on the table. Yes. It took uh, Justice McHugh and a handful of retired jurists and some brave QCs yes. who aren't on the teat of the government panel to put their hands up and have a go and shamed them into withdrawing it. But that was one of the most appalling pieces of legislation. We've had a curfew in a peacetime Australian state, for goodness sake. So the rule of law, in my view, is fragile. It means we need the independence. We've never needed more capital C conservatives in our judicial institutions, especially at the High Court. Mm. And uh, look, you know, the, the, this whole human rights apparatus, they can run around with their hair on fire over David Hicks, <laughs> but you can lock up five million, yeah. five million Melburnians yes. and not a peep out of them. So yes, I mean, give and... Nick Russian my mobile number because I bowl a gadding ball to Nick Reese every Friday night. <laughs> I don't know how to knock, knock him over <laughs> with, just, on the Kenny show. Just one final thing as a metaphor of what you're saying. I mean, you and I know, and the people watching us know, it's the AFL Grand Final this weekend, it's the Cox Plate, it's the yeah. biggest weekend in Melbourne in 365 days. Yeah. Daniel Andrews says, pubs can't open, and you can't bring visitors yep. to your home. Now, there are 1,450 members yeah. of the Victorian Hotels Association who are facing debt. This should be the biggest trading day of the year. Andrews says, don't you breach public health rules by bringing visitors to your home, yeah. and if the pubs are closed and you go to houses, we'll be after you and you'll get you. This is a metaphor of a totalitarian regime completely out of control, but they're unchallenged. And no rationale for the decisions. You know, places of worship closed, you can't go to a funeral. Yeah. Pecula uh, nearly you know, had a small gathering for the Cox Plate. My dough would have been Andrews to have led him on foot to the first turn in the Cox Plate, uh, <laughs> Alan, given, given, given how shifty he's proven himself to be, like hardest man in Victoria to catch. I'd have, Russian camel, I'd forget him. I'd have put my dough on the Premier. He'd have, take, he'd have led him on foot at the first turn anyway. <laughs> Great stuff, Catherine. Lovely to talk to you. We'll talk to you next week about a big issue because next week is Vets Week. Vets Week. A big, big issue which Catherine and I had some involvement in, in our hearts. We'll talk about it next week. You are a star. You Thank bet. you for your time. Lovely to see you. There she is, Catherine Cheers, McGregor. Back after the break. The next video coming up, my friend Dennis, he's a uh, computer programmer, and he's going to talk a little bit about quantum. It's his first time. We're a little bit amateur doing it, both of us, so it'll try and get that message across how the mobile phones and the apps are taking over and quantum payments and cash will disappear. Have a look ahead. It'll be up in the next day or two. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on, on viewing and sharing. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>